We've all been burnt by that. You order a large pizza and you down it and you're like, I need another one. You never done that? Oh, I've done that. Hey, welcome to Mythical Kitchen where dreams become food. You know what they say, any pizza can be a personal pizza if you're sad enough and that has nothing to do with the actual show. That's just a cry for help. <laughs> Today I'm gonna to teach you how to make three regional pizza styles that you've probably never heard of. If you have heard of them, complain in the comments like I know you were already planning on doing. Be like, actually I've heard of that one. My grandfather's from outside of Scranton and so I, you know, a lot of people actually know about that. But that said, you can take these pizzas, you can show them to your friends, you can save on airfare by just making them at home so you don't have to fly to uh, uh, old, uh, old Forge, Pennsylvania. You think Southwest flies to Old Forge, Pennsylvania? Well, fair enough. In that case, we've broken this down to three easy steps, AKA three different pizzas. You can stack the time codes right there. We also got full written recipes down in the description. Let's have ourselves a pizza party. Let me take you on a journey, a journey to Old Forge, Pennsylvania. It is a magical city. It's a village of 8,300 people, five miles southwest of Scranton proper in Lackawanna County, home to our very own sound guy, Chris Marino, and sound guy, Chris Marino. There you go, Chris. You're more than a sound guy, but you're my sound guy. This man has seen my nipples more than anybody else on this set. You gotta put the mic near the nipples. It's not like, uh, I don't like go out of my way to, <laughs> I don't like see Chris in his car in the morning. Be like, hey Chris, here's the nipples. Point is, uh, Chris's sister Leah actually went down to a pizzeria in Old Forge to ask him about the recipe and then gave that to us, which is really fantastic. The cool thing about Old Forge Pizza is that they consider themselves the pizza capital of the world, which for me is freaking awesome. I love when you get these like small towns that not only have like pride in their regional food, but also incredible confidence, right? Like you got New York a couple hours away, obviously the entire country of Italy, but no, the pizza capital of the world is in Old Forge. I'm about to show you why. So this is called pizza dough. Uh, this is a classic dough. Simple water, salt, olive oil, sugar, yeast, bread flour. And right now we're gonna start making uh, an Old Forge stuffed white pizza, which is one of the many Old Forge pizza styles. There's, there's kind of like two. Uh, there's the stuffed pizza and then the non-stuffed pizza. What makes it really interesting is that one, it's baked on a tray and they actually call a whole pie a tray. So you go and get a tray of pizza. And then if you want to slice, they call it a <laughs> cut. Well, I, that's one of the reasons I love these like regional foods that they just kind of have their own like internal lingo that kind of like means nothing, but they're very particular about it. I always thought that was the case when I went to Philly and I tried to order a cheesesteak and I was like, give me a whiz wit. And they're like, what? And I was like, whiz wit. I saw on a travel channel show, you say whiz wit. And they're like, you want a, a, a cheesesteak with cheese whiz and onions? I was like, yeah, give me the whiz wit, Tony. And the guy was like, my name's Angelo. And I was like, all right, Tony. Boy, it is. Uh, this is the stuffed pie. It kind of almost starts like a focaccia a little bit. We're gonna take a whole lot of oil and put that on the bottom of the pan and then run it up the sides a little bit. This way, the bottom of the pizza is actually gonna get really nice and crispy. And then we're going to stuff it with all of these cheeses right here. And there's a little secret to the cheeses. I can't lift my hands. It's just doused in oil, lube up all the way around. All right, great. So continue stretching out this dough. Give it a nice little, nice, nice little fist assist. So they call it an old forge. You say, give it the fist assist. They go, Tony, give it the fist assist. <laughs> and then Tony from Old Forge, Pennsylvania goes, my name's Angelo. Nice and luby. Oh, this is just a wet and oily dough. I love that. All right, all right, all right. Dough is stretched out across the pan. First layer. Oh, that oil makes it slick. Cheeses, pecan, pea. Pecorino, no, it's provolone. I, that's the problem with mnemonic devices. If there's multiple cheeses that start with P. So we have, <laughs> I forgot it again. P, we have provolone cheese going in there. That's um, not gonna BS yet. Could be any one of these. I'm gonna say this one. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add it to a bowl first because we wanna get the cheese evenly mixed up. So we got provolone cheese going in there and then mozzarella. Provolone's gonna give you like a little bit of a sharper taste than mozzarella. Mozzarella is there for all that delicious salt and that texture. Uh, and then we got m, p, m, p, cam, m, ka. Ah, could kiss see cheddar, white cheddar. White cheddar is gonna go in there and that is part of what makes Old Forge pizza that it is. They often use uh, Cooper's cheddar. We could not get Cooper's cheddar, but that is one of the cheeses that makes Old Forge pizza what it is. And then finally, American, which I know a lot of people crap on American cheese. You have heard me defend American cheese a thousand times. This isn't the Kraft American singles type of stuff. This is the stuff that you get uh, in a big old block from the deli that's basically a cheddar cheese that's been like thinned out with dairy additives. It gives it a really fantastic like melty silkiness. I'm just gonna go all throughout this pizza. So now we're gonna take all of this cheese and we're just gonna pile this in the middle of this dough. And then off in the Old Forge white stuff pile, we'll get stuffed with things like broccoli, onion, spinach. I'm not gonna do the broccoli, but I am gonna go onions and spinach right now. Just gonna lay a nice little bed of onion going through. I like a good old white veggie pie. Like the, the white pizzas that I do enjoy are the ones that are like this, that are just filled with so much cheese, so many veggies. They got so many different flavors going on. Here at Tony's Pizzeria, we don't. Not all Italian American men are named Tony.
okay? I'm just gonna lay this on top, I'm gonna fold it down and around, and then I'm gonna pinch it and sort of even it out everywhere. There we go. Just keep pinching. You really wanna seal it, prevent. You're gonna get some cheese ooze oozage. That's just a fact of life when you live in Old Ward, Pennsylvania. Uh, I really wanna go though. That'd be fun as heck, right? Just take like a food tour of a place that claims to be the pizza capital of the world. That's what I do. We need to make Burbank the food capital of the world for something. There's that place, Eaton Park, that says they have the world's best omelets. We could be the omelet capital of the world. Come to Burbank, enjoy our omelets. You might see Caesar Milan, the dog whisperer. There we go, now this bad boy's ready for the oven. But, whoa, hey, almost, oh, oh, hold on. Almost ready for the oven. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a mixture of oregano. <laughs> what was in there? I think I poured it into water. I did, I made an oregano, I made a, <laughs> this is called the Old Forge pizza smoothie. So we got, we have a spice mixture here. This is black pepper, oregano, garlic powder, a little bit of salt. I'm gonna take some more olive oil, kind of massage this on top of the dough. Beautiful, and I'm gonna take some of the spice mixture. You gotta kind of do one of these. Yeah, and now we're gonna take some dried rosemary here and sprinkle that on top. Boom, now it's ready for the oven. We're gonna pop this in the oven at 400 degrees for now it's ready for the oven. We're gonna pop it in the oven at 400 degrees uh, for about 15 to 18 minutes, depending on your oven. We'll check back. Now you're gonna come on a mile high club journey with me to Denver, Colorado, where the next pizza originated. Actually it didn't, it's uh, Idaho Springs. This pizza style is actually a little bit controversial because it's like kind of unclear whether it's an actual regional pizza style or if it was just one really enterprising pizzeria called Bojo's that started in Idaho Springs, Colorado in 1971. They seem to have just like invented the myth behind the Colorado mountain style pizza, but they insist it is a real regional style and it is actually really unique. So it starts with either a honey white crust or a honey wheat crust. I'm going to be saying honey, a lot because they put it in everything. There's honey in the sauce, there's honey in the dough, and then they serve the crust covered in honey. They say it's like a built-in dessert. And what they do is they actually braid the crust. So we're going with honey wheat right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a slit in the crust, and then I'm just gonna start braiding it. So I'm just gonna fold that over, and then you're gonna pleat the dough onto itself like a soup dumpling. And the whole thing is that it's designed to hold, quote, a mountain of toppings, hence Colorado mountain pie. You know, you're in the cold Colorado winters, you need a big old pie to keep you warm, I guess, I don't know. They actually sell it by the pound too, so like you don't go to a small, medium, or large. You get one pound, two pound, three pounds, four pounds, five pounds. That's like how you know how much food you're getting, right? We've all been burnt by that. You order a large pizza and you down it and you're like, I need another one. You never, you've never done that? We've braided it and now I'm gonna kinda like push it out, just trying to seal those braids in there. And now this is gonna create the, uh, I suppose, Rocky Mountain crust border for all the toppings we're about to add to this thing. So we're gonna take the pizza sauce, which uh, has local Colorado honey. We're gonna mound that in the middle. Also, I don't know if I need my food to have a built-in dessert. What if other foods came like that? Like you just get a steak that's just like wrapped in a Cinnabon. They're like, yeah, and then you unravel the Cinnabon from the steak and that's your dessert. I do think it's really cool though. And honey on pizza is like kind of a trendy thing. But Bojo started in 1971, Colorado, or Idaho Springs. Why is Idaho Springs in Colorado? No answers from the peanut gallery? All right, so we are making the mother load. The entire point of Bojo's Pizza is that it is just loaded with toppings. So we're gonna take some veggies. We got some red onion here. Scatter that around. We gotta be judicious because there's a lot going on. We're gonna take our green peppers, give a couple chunks there. And it's kind of like reminiscent of like a Chicago style deep dish pizza, except that has, you know, like the cornmeal infused crust. It's got like the raw sausage on the bottom and it's built almost like a casserole. This is just like a thick fat booty pizza. This is that big, just caboose style pizza. We're gonna get some bacon on there. Yeah. Did I forget to? Freaking put cheese on it? Dude, what is wrong with me? I'm gonna get a couple layer of toppings underneath the cheese. Oh. Then we're gonna mound the cheese on there. <laughs> oh, whatever. And we're cooking this on a perforated pan, which is what Bojo's does, which is how you get like uh, less steam creating on the bottom so it stays nice and crispy. Now I'm gonna take crumbled Italian sausage. Nice heaping help in a sausage. Man, there's a, there's a lot of meat going on this. I'm gonna take just some meatballs, kind of break them in half. Just tuck some whole meatballs on there. What? Gonna put a couple Ronies on there. Hold on, we're almost done, I swear. God, we're not. Gonna get some Canadian bacon. Again, the whole point is that it's loaded with toppings. And let's just get a couple more vegetables on top just for color and fun. Just for color. <laughs> wow, that's a, kinda gotta mash it down a little bit. There we go, all right, we're gonna pop this in the oven. Uh, this is going at uh, about 500 degrees for about 14 minutes. We'll check back. All right, so we had Colorado style mountain pizza. Now we literally have the Italian version of mountain pizza. It's literally called Pizza Montanara. It's from the mountains outside of Naples, Italy. 
That's at least one story. The other side of the story is that it was invented in Naples for mountain style people. The point is the thing that makes this pizza really, really cool is that it's a typical Neapolitan pizza dough, which is like what a lot of people consider the best pizza in the world. I probably consider it the best pizza in the world. They take that and then they fry it, which to me is the most American thing possible. And for whatever reason, it hasn't really caught on and become popular in America till now. That'd be pretty, like, it'd be pretty cool if it, if, like, did it, but, like, I, like, I probably won't, you know? Like, I just want to take credit for something, you know? Anyways, what we're going to do, we're going to take a typical Neapolitan-style dough right here. That's just olive oil, salt, uh, yeast, flour. Is there sugar in Neapolitan dough? Like, a little bit of sugar. Just let the, let the yeast go. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this, and we're just going to shape it by hand as they do in Naples. And then we're going to take it, and we're going to fry it in oil. And then you take that out, and you top it with the buffalo mozzarella. You get the pecorino romano. Uh, and then a little bit of a very simple sauce. It's just crushed tomatoes, garlic, and salt a little bit of fresh basil, doing it margarita style. This is what I'm really excited for. That This was the excuse to do this episode, really. I'm really stoked on this. I'm gonna keep the shape of that crust, but still want some structural integrity to the dough. So you're using the gravity to really stretch out the dough here and using your fingers to sort of create a little bit of a crust that should puff up, but not too much. There we go, it's looking better. So we're gonna take our pot of oil right here, and obviously you need like a big wide pot of oil. I can't, probably can't drop this in like a normal deep fryer, uh, but there is actually another style of pizza from Naples that is fried pizza called pizza fritte, which is like a stuffed pizza. It's, I mean, it's like the Italian version of a Hot Pocket that they deep fry, and that's also delicious, but I love that this resembles a Neapolitan pizza in all shapes and forms, except it's just deep fried and got that little saturation with oil. It's bellissimo! It's like an Andrea, Bar Andrea Bargnani? No, he was a basketball player. Andrea Pirlo, El Mago, the magician. Let's get in there. All right, cool. So now I'm just gonna lovingly and carefully get that into the oil. There we go. And now we're just gonna wait a couple minutes and it's gonna fry up really nice and then kind of give it to one of them. There you go. See with the high heat from the oil, you get like such incredible rise from it immediately. This is the stuff that I live for, deep frying a whole pizza. This is not to be confused with the uh, Scottish Pizza Crunch, which is a pre-made pizza that is then deep fried and served with something called brown sauce because British food, they got things like brown sauce. I like British, you know, no culture has bad food. Everyone figured out over like thousands of years that like good food is, is good and should be a thing. But like, come on, brown, brown sauce, what's up? All right, so now we're gonna take this and we're gonna flip it, trying to get the underside of that cooked. That's awesome. You see this crispy crackly crust that we got right here? Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna give it one more flip. I think one more flip with the hands. There we go, that's what we're looking for. We want that golden brown color. Let's shut off the heat, fry it for about another 30 seconds, and then we're out and we're into the, into the oven. All right, and a one, and a two, and a how do you do, we're out. Beautiful. I'm just gonna let that drain there. And now, oh God, we're just gonna pick it up and we're just gonna shake the hot oil off of it. This is fun for me. All right, and now, oh, <laughs> I forgot I'm greased up with the hot oil. All right, so we're gonna take some of that very simple tomato sauce. I'm just gonna sort of lather that around this fried crust. I mean, that dough is such an incredible texture. You know what the texture of the dough reminds me of? Something that all Italians grew up with, which is the caramel apple empanada from Taco Bell. As we all know, one of my favorite textures in all of food is fried things soaked in juice. And this really satisfies that. All right, beautiful, beautiful. Now we take some of this buffalo mozzarella. I milked the buffalo myself, and I'm just gonna, actually no, I'm getting the buffalo milked me. Uh, <laughs> just, what the hell am I talking about? I'm gonna take some pecorino. Uh, me and the sheep actually mutually milked each other for this one. <laughs> just gonna grate a little bit of that onto the cheese. You can always add more when we're done so. And then now we're gonna take this with our hands and we're just gonna pop it onto a pizza stone just to melt the cheese. Goodbye, fried pizza. <sighs> We have any burn cream? I feel like a proud papa looking down at his three large strong daughters. All competitors in the world's strongest woman competition. This is cool, man. This is bringing a tear to my eye. This, this is like actually the reason why I love food. Uh, it's like an expression of screw it. I'm just gonna top this with basil and cheese. I'm gonna grate cheese on top of this pizza montanara. Get some of that fresh pecorino on there. Beautiful, beautiful. Just a little bit. Don't wanna overpower it. And then we're gonna take Couple leaves of fresh basil. Man, these are the biggest basil leaves I've ever done seen. I'm gonna eat them now, and I'm not sharing with anybody. You get one Little Caesars hot and ready to share amongst yourselves. Now's the best part of the episode where you just get to watch me eat three whole pizzas by myself. We're turning this into a mukbang. I was about to say I'm putting the bang in mukbang, but I don't, I don't like where that was going. But I still said it to you, so let's try them. Let's cut into this here old four style pizza. Beautiful crackly crust on that. Oh, that's looking fantastic. You can just see all that oil and cheese oozing out. Who do I show? I show this to Morgan. Morgan, come look at all this freaking cheese and oil just oozing out of that pizza right there. It smells freaking delicious. Honestly, the American cheese is what I'm most excited for in this. And then also that little bit of salt on top. Ooh, oh, that nice crackly crust on the bottom. God dang it. Oh, smells 
You don't know what I didn't tell. Oh, both, it's both, it's both, it's both. Give me a second. It's like spanakopita, garlic bread, and pizza was in like a beautiful orgiastic three-way with each other. Like they don't know where the pleasure's coming from, baby. Like garlic bread's over here. He's touching and rubbing, you know, the spanakopita's like, hey, let me get in on the action. <laughs> God dang, I got All right, on the next one. <laughs> This is what they do at Bojo's. This is the point, they give you honey with every pizza and you just little lather up the crust and honey for a built-in dessert. So we're squirting honey all over the pizza. Uh, squirting and threesome, what are we doing? All right, let's cut. What, how do you even cut into this guy? This is a freaking, it looks like a normal pizza, but it's just like nine times denser than all the other ones. All right, freaking rip this slab out of here. Oh, this is a brick. That's such a fat brick boy. I'm just leaking pizza on the other pizza. Hold on, I'm gonna go crust first, get some honey on there. Oh, oh, that's great. Oh, come on, that's great. The honeybee, it's like a Subway bread. Like if the honeybee from the Subway, it tastes more like a cake. That's what this is, bro, it's cake pizza, that's awesome. I'll just jump in, this is. <laughs> Don't tell me how to do my job. Colorado Mountain Pizza said, there is, there's no problem with pizza, but I'm gonna fix it anyways. <laughs> And by God, it did it. It did, I mean, honestly, the crust is just this giant levy. You saw how many damn toppings I put on this? This is like three pounds. A tiny little dense thing, but it still eats like a pizza, which is not the case with most Chicago deep dish pizzas. Like, this is a holding up. This is a freaking banger. And then, <laughs> you already know I got my eyes on this bad boy. All right. Oh, you just feel the crackliness coming through that crust. Yeah. Oh, I have my eyes on you. Maybe I saw you from across the room. I was like, oh, I'm gonna make you, I'm gonna make you mad. Okay, look at that, look at that, look at all that leakage, that seepage, that ushy gushiness. <laughs> this one takes the cake from it. It's such a, because it has the flavor profile of a Neapolitan pizza, which for me is my favorite. That slightly watery tomato sauce with the buffalo mozzarella just gives it this nice juice, but then all that soaked up by the freaking fried dough, man. God. Mm. Mm. This is my favorite thing that we've done on the show. Like for real, like this is, I don't know if you saw the joy, or I don't know if what the emotion that I was emitting could be read as joy, maybe like a feral animosity, but these are all freaking good, man. We knocked them all out of the park in my humble opinion. I ain't never been to no old Ford, still don't really think the place exists. I don't even know Chris has a sister. Honestly, I never met her. Have you? You ever met her? Thank you guys so much for stopping by. I hope you learned something about regional pizza styles. I sure did. I enjoyed that I really like stuffing them straight into my throat and uh, kind of eating without chewing and doing a lot of heavy breathing about it. Anyways, thanks so much for stopping by. We got new episodes out every week. I just, my face is covered in honey and oil. My new episodes are a podcast, a hot dog is a sandwich every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcast. Hit us up on Instagram, at Mythical Kitchen under hashtag dreams become food. Just like, ah, oh, Chris, the microphone slipped down. Can I just finish? We're so close. Can I just do this? Just like Andrew did. Andrew said he makes pizza all the time. Time with a little assist from some palm heel strikes on the garlic and a little bit of praying to patron saint of Doe Trevor, he and his wife finally made a good pizza. Is that right, Chris? Can you hear me? Hi, Josh. Hey, buddy. See y'all next time. Hey, you! Cook up your own feast while wearing the Mythical Kitchen Apron. Available now at mythical.com.